In this video, we're going to discuss molecules and chemical bonds. Now, in the first video, when I introduced chemistry, I used the analogy of uh, letters and words to discuss at the relationship between atoms and molecules, right? You use letters to form words, right? So if you want to form the word cat, you would use the letters C-A-T, right? Same thing with molecules and their relationship to atoms. Molecules are simply just a collection of atoms. So if you want to form H2O, then you use two hydrogens and one oxygen. So you can view uh, any molecule in the sense of a collection of individual atoms. And so that's exactly what we're going to use to describe molecules. So molecules are just a collection of atoms. A collection of atoms, specifically a collection of atoms held together by forces. Right. So it's not that they're just, you know, chilling in the same area together. Right. There are specific forces that hold these atoms together and those forces are called chemical bonds. So a chemical bond. Is just any force. That holds atoms together. Right. So you can think of these as the glue, right? This is the glue that holds everything together. Um, you have a collection of atoms that form a molecule. Those forces, those chemical bonds are going to be what hold them in place, what hold them together as a collection. Now, there are two uh, types of chemical bonds that you should be familiar with. So our two types. Of chemical bonds. So the first one that I want to introduce to you is called the ionic bond. So an ionic bond is when you have uh, two atoms that have opposite charges. So they have net charges. One has a net positive, one has a net, net negative charge. And those opposite charges are what hold them together. Those electrostatic forces are what hold those two atoms together. So an ionic bond is the attractive force. Attractive force between two oppositely charged atoms. And since they're charged and we, we have the language now, they're two oppositely charged ions, right? So a cation and an anion come together um, in order to form this, this charge, right? To, to form this, this electrostatic interaction, right? An atom with a positive charge and a negative charge come together to, to form this electrostatic interaction and form an ionic bond. So uh, a perfect example of this is sodium chloride, right? So the molecule sodium chloride is made up of sodium and chlorine, right? So you have sodium and chlorine that come together. Now, what's interesting here is that, and we'll talk about these properties more later on in the course, but what you'll learn is that sodium is very likely to give up an electron and chlorine is more than happy to take that electron. So what you actually end up getting when you have sodium and chloride come together, sodium and chlorine come together, is that you get an electron transfer, right? So this arrow denotes electron transfer, right? Sodium's really happy to give up an electron. Chlorine's really excited to take it. So you end up with a positively charged sodium atom, right? Because it just gave up an electron. It gave up its electron to chlorine. So now it has one more proton than it does electron. So it has a positive charge and you have a negative charge on the chlorine. So what happens here is that since this um, electron transfer more or less takes place, uh, there's going to be an electrostatic interaction between the sodium and the chlorine atom to form sodium chloride. Now, since 
this has a net positive and this has a net negative, those are going to cancel out to, to give you a neutral, uh, overall neutral charge, right? So uh, when we write sodium chloride, we typically just say NaCl as the molecular, as the, um, the formula, because it doesn't have a net positive or negative charge, but it's uh, held together by these ionic bonds, this electrostatic force. Now, the other type of bonding that you need to be familiar with is called the covalent bond. So covalent bonds, these are attractive forces that are formed by the sharing of electrons, right? So there's an attractive force by sharing electrons. Oops, there we go. Sharing electrons, right? So let's use water as an example, right? So if we have the oxygen in the center, right? Oxygen, what oxygen is gonna do is share one of its electrons with hydrogen. And I'll use these dots to denote electrons. Um, this is something that we do a lot in chemistry and we'll talk about more about bonding models later in the course, but we can show that the oxygen will share an electron with hydrogen, right, on one side. And on the other side, it'll also share an electron with hydrogen on the other side, right, to give you H2O. Now, the way that we denote this sharing of electrons is usually with a line, right? So uh, one, of the, one of the ways to draw molecules is to have the individual atomic symbols and then draw lines to represent the bonds between the different atoms. So for water, for example, we can have the oxygen in the center, and then we can have a bond, this dash to one of the hydrogens, and then a, a dash to the other hydrogen, right? And that gives you a representation of the water molecule. Now, you may have seen the water molecule drawn in the following way. You might have seen it, in fact, I may have drawn it like this already, um, drawn like this. This type of representation is meant to denote the three-dimensional structure of water. And we'll talk a lot about this later in the course, but uh, you can basically represent the relative angles uh, between these different bonds and whatnot, between these different atoms, uh, by using this type of notation. So this is more of what water looks like uh, in three dimensions that's determined from experiment. And we have some ways to determine that as well. Again, something that we'll talk about later on in the course, right? So, uh, so these two types of bonding, these are really the two extremes of bonding, uh, pure ionic bonds or pure covalent bonding. Um, and most bonds are really somewhere between the two where it has some sort of charge-like character. Again, something we'll talk about a little bit more detail later in the course. Okay, so, uh, so this is what water looks like in its two-dimensional uh, line structure. There are a few three-dimensional uh, models of molecules that you've probably seen in textbooks before that I want to make sure you're familiar of, familiar with and know the difference between. So the first one is the ball and stick model. And this ball and stick model is really meant to show the relative orientation of different atoms with respect to one another um, and kind of be as close to this line drawing as possible in a 3D representation. So you'll notice that you see, you kind of see the three-dimensional geometry sort of resembles this line structure that I drew there. And basically what, what happens here is that you have the atoms represented as spheres and the bonds represented as sticks. And so that's why we call it the ball and stick model is that each ball represents an atom and the sticks represent bonds between different atoms. Now the space filling model is a different one that actually conveys better volumetric information. So this basically tells you how much, it shows all of the atoms still in their relative position, but it shows a better approximation of how much space each individual atom takes up, which is really lost in this ball and stick model, but a space filling model really shows you how much space relative to one another the atoms are taking up. Uh, because these, like, like we talked about in the atomic models, right, the, the electron clouds take up a lot of space. So really when we're talking about sharing electrons, we're really talking about a lot of overlapping between these, you know, electron clouds that these different atoms 
uh, have on one another. So this space filling model does a little bit of a better job showing the relative space that all of the diff all of the different atoms in the molecule take up. Okay, so uh, so hopefully this video gives you a good introduction to molecules, what they are, uh, different types of chemical bonding that you should be familiar with, and what these different three-dimensional representations of molecules actually mean.